Hi everyone, welcome to Read Alouds with Miss Martha. Today we're going to read one of my daughter's favorite books, Louise the Big Cheese. Have you ever had an idea in your mind and then things just didn't go according to your plans? Well that's what happens to the main character Louise in this story. She really wants to be the star of the school play, but things just don't work out the way she was expecting. I hope you enjoy the story as much as we do. So please follow along with Louise the Big Cheese by Elise Primavera and Diane Good. Louise the Big Cheese by Elise Primavera, illustrated by Diane Good. Louise the Big Cheese, Divine Diva. Mrs. Cheese, Mr. Cheese, Louise, Pee Wee, the dog. Louise Cheese was a small girl who lived in a sleepy town on a quiet street in a modest house. She longed for her mother to be the brownie troop leader. She prayed for her father to be the principal of her school. But Mr. and Mrs. Cheese did not like the limelight or a lot of fuss. Louise liked the limelight. She liked a lot of fuss and more than anything else in the world, she wanted to be a big cheese. Louise shared a room with her dog, Pee Wee. They slept in a tiny bed near a window that looked out to a little crab apple tree that never seemed to get any larger. She wished she had a room like her big sister, Penelope, with a big mirror where she could look at herself and create hairdos. She wished she had a big bed with a dust ruffle like Penelope's and a dressing table with tubes of lipsticks with names like Ballet Slipper Pink, Ruby Melt, and Divine Diva. Because she was so little, Louise was not allowed in Penelope's room ever. What's a divine diva? It's a big star. Oh, you mean like when I walk down the red carpet to get my Bosco? I think you mean Oscar. Louise wished she could do her hair like Penelope's. She wished she had divine diva lipstick. She wished she could walk right out of her little room, down a red carpet, and become a big star. Dream big. That's my motto. I've heard that it's not so easy to be a big star, Louise's best friend Fern told her when she heard of Louise's plan. And so at school, when her teacher, Mrs. Little, announced this year's school play was going to be Cinderella, Louise wished she could be Cinderella in the play. This was her chance to be a big star, a divine diva. She could see herself now, signing autographs, blowing kisses, being tossed bouquets of roses, then maybe there would be a big director from Broadway in the audience, and he would insist on her going back with him and being Cinderella there. Bravo, bravo, Louise. Louise's hand shot up because she knew she had to be Cinderella in the school play. I want to be Cinderella in the school play. I would like to be Cinderella in the school play. One at a time, girls, Mrs. Little interrupted. But I take dancing lessons. You do not. Since when? You do not. Since now? I do too. I take dancing lessons. Curls, girls, Mrs. Little said. Tomorrow will be the tryouts for the part, and then I will decide who will be Cinderella in the school play. That night after dinner, Louise told her mother, her father, Penelope, and Pee Wee that she was playing the lead role of Cinderella in the school play, and that she would probably be going to Broadway soon. Her parents said that they would be sad to see her go. Pee-wee cried. Penelope was glad and said Louise could even have her tube of Divine Diva lipstick as a going away present. Tapioca Elementary School presents Louise the Big Cheese in the class production of Cinderella. And she's probably going to Broadway. That's what Louise is imagining. The next day at the tryouts, Mrs. Little watched Louise dance and she listened to Louise sing. Mrs. Little watched Fern dance and she listened to Fern sing. Mrs. Little listened to all the other children sing and dance too. The hills are alive with the sound of music. She had to decide who was going to play the part of Cinderella, the big part of the prince and the big part of the fairy godmother and the big parts of the evil stepsisters. But not all the parts were big. Some roles were small, for instance, the mice. Louise just knew that she was going to be Cinderella. She felt really sorry for Fern because she was probably going to have to be a mouse. Very soon, Mrs. Little decided. She decided that Louise would be a mouse and Fern would be Cinderella. Dream big, I'm not speaking to you. 
and Louise meant it. She did not speak to Fern all that day or the next. She did not speak to Fern when the class goldfish died and they got a guinea pig. I'm still not speaking to you. She did not speak to Fern when the girl in the second row got in trouble for calling her fingernails with a red crayon instead of doing a reading assignment. She didn't even speak to Fern when she had when they had a substitute teacher with wrinkly knees. Now Fern will sign autographs, Louise thought. Fern will blow kisses and be showered with roses and Fern will be on Broadway playing Cinderella. Things couldn't be worse, or could they? The Monday before the play, they got their costumes. Fern got a frilly pink big cheese Cinderella ball gown. Louise got an itchy gray costume with a tail that kept falling off. The outfit had been one of the three blind mice in the kindergartner's school play. At the end of the play, Fern got to say, Fairy Godmother, I have never been so happy in my entire life and it's all thanks to you. Louise got to say, This way, Your Royal Highness, while she held open the door of a cardboard box that was supposed to be a pumpkin carriage. Fairy Godmother. By the day of the show, Louise felt like she was coming down with something. Fern's the divine diva, I'm the stinking mouse. But how can you stay home? You're the star of the show, the divine diva, and you're going to Broadway. Louise went downstairs to tell her parents the truth. You don't mind that I'm just a mouse? Thank goodness. Her mother said, we would miss you too much if you went to star on Broadway. Her father said, it just wouldn't be the same around here. Just before they left the house, Penelope put some divine diva lipstick on Louise's lips. There, even if you aren't a diva, you can at least look like one. Finally, the curtain was ready to go up. Louise stood in the wings, a little sweaty inside the mouse costume, but wearing the lipstick made Louise decide she didn't look half bad. Places, everyone. I like your lipstick, Louise, it's pretty. Will you remember me when you're on Broadway? Let me come backstage, get me front row seats or something. The curtain went up. Fern walked on stage and Louise missed her friend already. The school play went along well. None of the scenery fell down like it kept doing in rehearsal and all the music came right on cue and Louise's tail managed to stay on. Louise danced around the cardboard pumpkin carriage scanning the audience for the important director from Broadway. But all she saw was her family. They waved at her from the third row and Louise didn't know if it was her divine diva lipstick, but she sang and danced better than she ever had before. Soon, it was the grand finale. Fern raised an arm to deliver her last line and looked more like a big star than Louise ever could have imagined. Fairy Godmother, Fern announced. Um, um, Louise waited along with the entire audience. Fairy Godmother, Fern said in a little voice, um, um, there was complete silence. And Louise could see that Fern's face was white and her hand was trembling. The audience shifted uncomfortably in their seats and someone coughed. Fern looked terrified, but could only say, um, um, uh-oh, she must have stage fright. Poor Fern, did she say something? Cough, cough. Will Fern be able to continue? What did she say? Shh, did you hear anything? Trying hard not to let anyone see her, Louise whispered out of the side of her mouth to Fern, I've never been so happy in my entire life and it's all thanks to you. Fairy Godmother, I've never been so happy in my entire life and it's all thanks to you. The audience cheered, the play was over, the girls took their bows. Bravo, encore. As it turned out, there was no big director in the audience or a trip to Broadway like Louise had imagined, but she and Fern were friends once more. When the curtain went down, Fern signed Louise's program and Louise signed Fern's program. Cinderella, XOXO, Louise. Cinderella, XOXO, Fern. I'll never not speak to you again. Louise, you're a true friend. Great show, best show yet. Yay, nice, wow. Fern was number one and the mice were great. That night, Louise went home to her tiny room and climbed into her small bed. I'm so relieved you're not going to Broadway. Not tonight anyway, Pee Wee. Louise sighed. 
The crab apple tree that never seemed to get any larger shimmered in the moonlight. And even though she was still little, somehow Louise couldn't help feeling happy. The end. Louise the Big Cheese. So what did you think? Did you enjoy Louise the Big Cheese? What was your favorite part? I think my favorite part is when Louise helped her friend remember the lines during the play. I think that showed how Louise learned something about friendship and how friendship's really important, maybe even more important than being a big star. Thanks for reading with us today. Have an awesome day.